Hey guys, it's Nikki, and I'm here to talk to you about some of the best new books we have in our collection. The first one I have is When Sue Found Sue by Tony Bezeo and illustrated by Diana Sedeco. Uh, this is the story of Sue, the T-Rex at the Field Museum, and Sue Hendrickson, the paleontologist who found and named her. A paleontologist is uh, somebody who works with or on fossils. And I chose this book because, aside from the marvelous illustrations and the detail that they have, uh, I just hope it'll inspire other kids or inspire kids to explore and nurture their curiosity about the world. And then the next book I have is *On the Wings of Words* by uh, *The Extraordinarily Life of Emily Dickinson* by Jennifer Byrne and illustrated by Becca Statlander. And I chose this one because. Byrne combines her own words with the with words from Emily's poetry, and it just brings the story of Emily Dickinson's courage, faith, and her own poetry to life, and gives them the wings they needed to fly, and I just thought it was cool. And then the next one is Finding Narnia, the story of C.S. Lewis and his brother, and I chose this one primarily because I wanted to learn more about C.S. Lewis and Narnia, because I'm a huge nerd, but uh, looking through it, it was really fascinating to see how like, the illustrators, uh, Jessica Lannan's illustrations and this simple emotional way uh, McAllister wrote was the... It was just really neat to see. And plus, it was just kind of cool how they portrayed the two brothers as connecting through their own imagination. And it was just nice. Uh, and then... The next one I have is 16 Words, William Carlos Williams in the Red Wheelbarrow by Lisa Rogers and Chuck Gronick. And then much like the other ones that I've talked about so far, I chose this book because it offered a new perspective on something that I never really appreciated as a kid, which is the Red Wheelbarrow by William, like the poem, the Red Wheelbarrow. And it's just, the illustrations are just really simple and streamlined and I just appreciate how they did it. And this book made this simple poem that I never appreciated as a kid. It brought it to life and made it feel real. And I liked that and it offered, and I hope other people appreciate that. And then next up, I have Everyone Counts, a counting story from zero to 7.5 billion by Kristen Roskif, Roskift? Not the pronunciation, to be honest. And then this counting book is unlike any other I've ever seen because it asks readers to imagine who like who in this classroom could be the next future president or who is dreaming about soccer practice or hold on there's another page and then there we go. or it's just like who in this banking competition do you think would be the winner or who in this room do you wish would stop wearing? Who wishes they would stop wearing pink? Because it's just 29 people in a club for members who only wear pink. And then one of them is thinking about canceling their membership. One of them got lost on the way to a workshop for people who are afraid of flying. And one of them is a taxi driver. And it doesn't tell you, there's like no indication of who's which. And it just leaves it up to your imagination and your guess. And it's just really cool. And it goes up to 7.5 billion people in the world. And it's just different and brilliant, and I really appreciated it. Okay, the last picture book I have for you guys is Anti-Racist Baby by Ibram X. Kendi and illustrated by Ashley Luk Lukashevsky. If that's wrong, somebody please tell me. And then, it's brand new, it came out this month. And I chose it because, aside from the very obvious social significance, it offers nine simple steps of like how to make equality a reality. And it's just between Kendi's words and Lukashevsky's illustrations. It's just a simple, lovely, brilliant little book for all ages. And it's a message that will always be important. Okay, as I said, we are moving away from picture books. So the first chapter book I have for you is Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. And it's a ghost story, if that wasn't spooky enough. Uh, and then it's the first in a series, 
and it tells the story of Ellen of Helen. Sorry, I'm confusing the character name with the author name. It's the character's name is Harper Rain. The author is Ellen O, and that's why I was confused. But Harper Rain and her family move into a new house, and there are ghosts. It's pretty cool. It's for eight to twelve year olds. Says so on the back. I up to you. And it offers short chapters, a gripping mystery, and naturally ghosts. The next book I have is Winterborn House for Vengeance and Valor by Allie Carter. And while it's not a ghost story, it's still a mystery. And I've read a few, like the High Society books by the same author, so I can tell you that she writes a good mystery, and it's gripping, it's interesting. And in this book, April, the main character, has to find clues that her mother has hidden around Winterborn House, which is a group home for people in the foster system which April is steadfastly refusing that she's a part of because her mom will come back. Uh, but anyway, she's got to find these clues that her mom left. And to do that, and like when she does that, her mom will come back. Or she'll be able to find her mom. But uh, those are not the only secrets Winterborn Home holds. And it's up to April and her friends to figure them out before a disaster strikes. Okay. And then the last book I have is Anya and the Dragon by Sophia Pasternak. And filled with mayhem, magic, Vikings, and Russian folk heroes, Anya and the Dragon tells the tale of a girl who, while trying to save her family's home, stumbles into a world she never thought existed, never could have imagined, and makes her question everything she thought she, thought she knew. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys. So I hope you enjoy, I hope you find other books that you like, and I'll see y'all next time.